Today I want to talk about the Freddy Gray riots, which happened almost eight years ago to the day. And I just want to take a look at the legacy of, of what happened. Uh, most people are familiar with the general idea of what happened. But a lot of people don't know what happened in the eight years since. Everybody cared about Baltimore for about a week there in 2015. And then once the cameras went off, things went pretty much back to how they were. So in this video, I just want to talk about some of the uh, things that have happened since and what I think the overall impact of the riots and protests were. And I'm going to be straight up with you. I think they were overwhelmingly negative. I think they sent the city in a completely bad direction. Now, there may have been some justification for why people were frustrated and angry. And the police department certainly has issues and had issues that need to get sorted out. But the overall statistics bear out that the riots were absolutely devastating for the city. And uh, I'm just going to touch on a few topics why I think that's the case. Now, the first one is the spike in violent crime. Prior to the uh, 2015, Baltimore was averaging somewhere in the low 200s uh, in terms of number of murders per year. This was a number that had steadily decreased since it peaked previously in the early 1990s. I think 2011 or 2012 was uh, the lowest it got. It got, I think, believe, just under 200. But then in 2015, there was a direct spike in violence following the riots. As you can see on this chart, it, it can't, you can't get more direct than this. And uh, I think a lot of it was the general sense of lawlessness that kind of overtook the city following the riots, as well as the police force and their uh, unwillingness to be proactive like they were prior to the riots. And uh, a lot of people refer to it as them taking a knee or stepping back and uh, arrest plummeted, gun arrest plummeted, and not surprisingly, murders and other violent crimes spiked dramatically. And it really hasn't come down in the eight years since. If you look at the numbers, in the five years prior, say it was around 225 murders per year, in the five years or seven years since, it's been about 325 murders per year. So you're talking basically 100 more murders per year. And, uh, you know, I guess co uh, correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation, but it's, it's pretty clear to me that that the riots had a very negative effect on violent crime in the city. Now, the next thing was the Department of Justice consent decree. This was a report uh, done on the police force that was looked at all the issues that the police force had, a lot of unconstitutional practices and just generally poor quality policing. And this report came out, some of which was good, some of which I think was, uh, was a little bit overkill and kind of tied the hands of the police and prevented them from being able to operate uh, the way police should be able to operate. So I guess that was kind of a mixed result. Some people would argue it was a good thing. Some people would argue it was a bad thing. But one of the direct results of that consent decree was a shrinking police force. Following the riots, prior to the riots, Police agencies across the country had no problem filling vacancies. Oftentimes there was 100 applicants for every 10 positions, or, or in some cases I've heard ratios even higher than that. Following the riots, and particularly in the last few years, given the uh, political climate and the general disdain for police, it's been increasingly difficult to hire qualified candidates, particularly in high crime areas like Baltimore. So Baltimore, as you can see by these charts, has had a rapidly shrinking police force and a rapidly rising number of vacancies. Now, this is obviously not a good thing in a city that also has had a substantial spike in violent crime. Uh, another thing that was a, in my opinion, basically a direct result of the riots uh, was a decrease in tourism. Uh, the Inner Harbor, anybody who's been down there in the last several years knows that it's it's basically dead. There's almost all the businesses have gone out of business. Very few people go into the Inner Harbor. You know, you don't have so many of the, the school field trips from the county coming into the Inner Harbor like it used to be. And, uh, the, it's unfortunate because the Inner Harbor only 10 or 15 years ago was the crown jewel of Baltimore and people would literally make it a destination. They'd go to Baltimore so they could go to the Inner Harbor. 
And that has not only because of the riots, but that has definitely been affected by both the riots, the crime, and the, uh, the, the, uh, the effect that the riots had on the city's reputation. It's always been known as a violent city, but the riots really put a, uh, a stamp on the city as a, a, a no-go zone for a lot of uh, people from out in the counties and other places in Maryland. And I mean, whether that's justified or not, it really doesn't matter because that's the way a lot of people think of it. And unfortunately, the results are what we see with the Inner Harbor now, where it's virtually a ghost town. Another place where we can see this decrease in tourism is in the Baltimore Orioles attendance. Prior to the riots, they were averaging close to 30,000 fans per year. And as you can see by this chart, that has dropped off a cliff. Now, a big portion of that may have been the the Orioles have had terrible teams the last several years. But even still, like this year, they're one of the best teams in baseball and, and still early, so maybe you can blame the weather. But the general trend is that since 2015, attendance has dropped dramatically. And I think it's reasonable to make the connection to the riots and, once again, the impact on the city's reputation, the spike in violent crime, and, and all those other factors. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is... The prosecution of the officers involved in the Freddie Gray incident. A lot of people think that it was totally justified that that officers be charged. I mean, I don't think it, anybody thinks it's a good thing when someone dies in police custody. So obviously, investigations are warranted, and if there was wrongdoing, then charges are warranted. But in this case, the uh, incompetency of the state's attorney's office, I, I think they they got hung up in trying to make a political statement rather than trying to put together a coherent court case. And by doing this, they ended up overcharging people. They charged six officers, including the driver of the van that Freddie Gray was in with second degree murder. And I know that for a lot of people, the emotional response is that they want to see justice and they want to see the people responsible for Freddie Gray's death to be, you know, behind bars and all that. But the problem, like I said, is that we still have a legal system and you still have to prove wrongdoing. You can't just be mad. And unfortunately, I think that's what the state's attorney's office did. They, they just wanted to show how angry they were. They wanted to virtue signal how, how good they were because of how many charges they were bringing. The problem is charges don't mean anything if you can't prove it. And, I mean, looking at the, some of their uh, court documents, it's, it's pretty clear that they had a pretty incoherent case. Um, and that was, that was sort of borne out after the first several officers were found either not guilty or there was a, a hung jury. Then the rest of the uh, tra uh, charges were dropped against the other officers just because it was clear that those charges weren't going anywhere. So, um, like I said, it kind of uh, seemed like the making a political statement was was valued more than finding justice by the state's attorney's office. Now, thankfully, that particular state's attorney is no longer the state's attorney, which I think is a great thing for the city. And I'm hoping that that uh, her not being around is uh, leads to some changes in the criminal justice system and the way uh, crimes are prosecuted and and all that, but remains to be seen. So anyways, that's all I got for now. Um, I'd like to hear your all's comments. Do you think the uh, legacy and the overall effects of the riot were generally positive for the city or generally negative? Do you think they were justified in, in taking to the streets following the death of Freddie Gray, or do you think it was uh, an overreaction and violent criminals taking advantage of a a volatile situation for their own purposes. Also, if you uh, like this kind of content, please subscribe. I've been uh, been trying to make slightly more involved content, give my thoughts on certain Baltimore-related issues, and uh, any support, likes, subscribes, and shares are, are very much appreciated. And hopefully, if I can get a get enough traction on this, I can, I can start to put more time and, and make better quality content. So thanks again.